This is perhaps the weirdest CPU upgrade option ever produced. Welcome to Gadget Blues. Today we have a really unusual retro computing product called the All Charge Card. Back in 1987, Intel had released the 3D6 CPU and it really made the existing systems very obsolete. A lot of folks had just paid a ton of money for 286 systems and the 3D6 had a whole bunch of capabilities like memory bank switching and virtual machines and so forth that were not available in the 286. And people didn't want their expensive 286s to become obsolete. So All Computer Corporation, All Computer Incorporated, came out with the All Charge Card as a workaround to give extended life to those 286 systems. I think the All Charge Card is very unusual in the history of system upgrades because while this goes in between the CPU and the socket, this doesn't let you run a newer CPU. It actually gives new features to your existing CPU. And while there have been a lot of other CPU upgrade options over the years, including from Intel themselves in the form of the Intel Overdrive processors, which let you put, for example, a Pentium into a 486 socket, this is unique in that it adds completely new CPU features to your existing processor. And what you would run with this is mostly a DeskView software. DeskView was a text-based multitasking environment that lets you run multiple DOS applications and even Windows 286 within their own pseudo virtual machines using memory bank switching technology. The all charge card gave your existing 286 really fast memory bank switching technology in hardware with this additional chip. What you would do when you installed this is disable as much memory as possible on your motherboard and put that memory onto an expanded memory card. Then this would take over and be able to switch everything all the way down to 64K on your machine. It did that switching so quickly that it worked great for multitasking and the switching context between programs was incredibly fast. You would hit like Alt-Tab to switch between Microsoft Word for DOS and Procom Plus or Windows 286 running in its own environment. And that switching would happen so quickly that by the time your key hit the bottom, you would be switched. Even today, in modern operating systems that use full screen applications, uh, switching from one to the other does take some repainting and some uh, processing behind the scenes. So this was really incredibly responsive and it gave 18 to 24 months of new life to existing 286 machines. So it worked not only on regular 286 PC clones, but on PS2s and on the original IBM AT because it was not in any way specific to any particular system or motherboard design. Let's take a look at what's in the box. First we had the manual, and this was an important thing to have because the installation of the charge card itself is rather tricky. And then the last half of the manual is dedicated to their memory manager, the all EMM4 driver, which was very much like EMM3D6 that came with MS-DOS. This would allow you to load drivers and TSRs and so forth outside of the 640K so that you could have as much space as possible for those multiple DOS apps or Windows 286 that you wanted to run within the first 640K. That is a complicated process, figuring out what order to load all of those drivers into which open memory segment and so forth. So that was kind of an art at the time, very complicated and it would be different from each system based on what cards you had installed, what memory ranges they used. For example, token ring was particularly difficult to get things working with. 
So you would need not only this manual, but a good amount of familiarity with MS-DOS memory management in order to use this product effectively. And you had the software with the all EMM4 driver. We have a CPU removal tool, which I'll get to in a moment. And then the all charge card itself. As you can see, this is an interposer board, meaning that it goes between the CPU socket and the CPU. So you would pop out the CPU using the CPU removal tool. This socket here on top is the same as the one that you would see on the motherboard, so we can use it as a demonstration. These two little areas in the corner allow you to get these little arms underneath the processor. You pull the lever, it would pop the processor out of the socket. It's friction fit in there. And so you would pop that out of the motherboard. You would put this into the motherboard socket. You see this has pins around the outside of it, just like the CPU did. So that would friction fit into the motherboard. And then you would put the processor back into this socket, which is the same as the socket that was on the motherboard. This big custom chip, in combination with this rather miraculous set of three dips mounted within the socket itself, would provide that bank switching capability and work with their memory management software. Oddly enough, unlike today where you generally get one version of a desktop CPU, there were three package versions of the 286, so all needed to make three different versions of the charge card. I'm sure this didn't help their bottom line or their inventory management. The three versions of the 286 were the PGA or pin grid array. That's the one with the pins coming out the bottom of it that you've probably seen before on other processors. Then there's the leadless chip carrier or LCC, which is this version. This means it doesn't have any pins. The connections are around the outside of the CPU and it's friction fit. Now, since it's friction fit, as I noted, it's pretty sturdy in there. It clicks into place and so forth but it theoretically could pop out. So Intel also made for industrial applications and was also used on certain regular mainstream motherboards, the protected leadless chip carrier or PLCC, which was the same thing except it had a metal plate over the top that locked in place to keep the CPU from popping out. So before ordering this, you needed to know which of those three 286 CPUs you had on your motherboard to order the correct part from all computer. So that's the all charge card. I think this thing is particularly fascinating in a historical context because as I mentioned, while there have been a lot of CPUs that plug into different sockets, I think this is the only system I'm aware of that greatly enhances the existing CPU apart from some modern developments that go back and enhance retro computers. For example, someone has a board for the Commodore PET called the PetVet that actually replaces a lot of the PET system on a single board that plugs in the CPU socket. But in terms of contemporary things, there hasn't been another system that enhances the existing CPU like this. So this is a great thing to have in my collection. I really snapped this up when I saw this in a thrift store. It, this particular one has never been used. There's an RMA on a post-it note there. So someone presumably returned their original all charge card and got this back as an RMA, may never have installed it. I broke the seal on this when I got it. So it's kind of fun to have. I hope you enjoyed this look at this little bit of retro computing history. So please like and subscribe and we will see you in the next Gadget Blues.